Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTablesDamper.com. Today you're watching video three in a series of three featuring the Sunny Splash and Rays of Light stamp sets from Stampin' Up! These are new in the annual catalog. We're going to make this fun bag in a box. I found the cutest treats at the Dollar Tree. I walked right in and they were sitting on a table right in the doorway. They had um, sunscreen. 30 SPF 30 in an orange tube and SPF 50 in a purple tube that's like fresh freesia. So perfect with the um, Butterfly Kisses designer series paper. And then they had the handheld fans with in three colors, the red, orange, and blue. So all just really too perfect for this theme that I have going on with the... Um, sunny splash so i've got my treats in a treat bag and i'm just using i buy this one from claire bags it's gb15 you can buy them in a pack of 100 it's um four by two and an eighth by 12 inch treat bag and when given a choice from claire bags i buy um the you know 12 inch treat bag over the eight inch treat bag or the nine inch treat bag because uh, no matter what you put in there, you can cut down a 12 inch treat bag, but you can't cut down an eight inch treat bag um, to eight and a half. You know what I mean? So I always go with a little bit longer um, if there's multiple sizes available. And for this one, we don't need quite as long a bag. So I'm just gonna cut two inches off the top and then bag up my treats. We did this fun bag in a box with a pudding theme using the a little cheesy stamp set for the sampler celebration. And I couldn't resist doing another one after I found these great treats at the Dollar Tree. I've got some crushed curry ribbon here. It's a retired one. I'll tell you just in case you have it in your stash. stash. This is the stitched satin crushed curry ribbon. I love Stampin' Up's color coordination, but we don't have anything really crushed curry right now. If you have the retired bumblebee gingham or the retired bumblebee ribbon that just retired out of the last catalog, that would work. Um, and then I think even the Daffodil Delight Roushed ribbon that was recent would work with this Butterfly Kisses paper too. So take a look and see what you've got in your in your collection. That's what I did. So there is our bag. Now let's make a cute little box to put it in. And I'm just going to correct the angle over there. When you tie off the spool, there's no waste. That just want to point that out to you. I left the ribbon on the spool to tie up the treat bag. All right, let's slide that aside. And I've got my, I can leave that off in the corner of the view there. I've got my um, Starry Sky cardstock for the base of the box. And it is six and three quarters by 11. This is the template. I will have a picture of that for you on the project sheet. The principal project sheet will be available on the blog, kitchentablestamper.com. And the link is in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. All right, let's pop this in on the 11 inch side and we're gonna score at one half, two and a quarter, five and three quarters, seven and a half, rotate once to the right, and we're gonna score at one and three quarters, and six. Then we're gonna work those score lines with our bone folder and trim it up according to the template. All right, the first one we're gonna trim is this skinny little rectangle out of the corner. Cut that off at an angle. Then we're going to cut an angle here and an angle here to take out a triangle see and then we'll do a little bevel cut here we need these two glue tabs bottom tabs get liberated i just cut out this scored paper just a small little triangle like a dart cut it'll debulk a little bit make the bottom of your box come together a little more tidy all right there we go Let's get some tear and tape and put this together. This is the front panel of the box because when it's wrapped up, there's no seams on the front. You see that? So we're going to add tear and tape across the bottom on the front panel and then across the bottom 
on the back panel. So inside, outside, and then we're going to run tear and tape on this long tab here on the outside, and on the short tab outside and inside. We'll remove the long liner first and fold the little collar over at the top of the box. I'm going to bring this together. We're going to take this um, score line and bring it right to the, together at this score line, making a nice corner. And then we can pivot and slide, get this cut edge along this folded edge. Close up the box real nice. Then go ahead and remove the liner on here. I removed the liner on here before. <laughs> Ended up with everything all stuck together. So just save that one for the second step. Fold it in under the little collar. And then you can kind of roll up your adhesive. Make sure that there's none sticking out. And then smash down and close that collar. Now you've got a beautiful little detail all around the top of your bag or your box. Now we're going to remove the liner on the bottom tabs. Make sure that you're folding the back to the front and then the front to the back, which brings all the seams to the back of the box. You've got your seam across the bottom, your seam across the back, and your seam across the collar all on the same back side of the box. And you can burnish that from the inside with your bone folder. And there is our delightful box to put our bag of goodies. <laughs> All right, let's slide that aside for a second and do some stamping. I've got a piece of basic white cardstock here. We're gonna apply that gorgeous ray of light background. This piece is three and a quarter by three and three quarters, I believe. Let's take a look. Yep. Yeah, three and a quarter by three and three quarters. And we're gonna bring our ray, rays of light background in. I always stamp first so then I can see my placement. Of course, I want this um, gorgeous, like radiating center. We're gonna close it or we're gonna cover it, but I love that we can decide where that's gonna be on our design. And I want it to be kind of a little bit up and a little bit right of center. So having this image stamped on the grid paper gives me the opportunity to place that just where I want it. And then the grid can really help me get my design applied straight and level. I'm using So Saffron ink to ink my stamp. I'm gonna grab another ink pad here and use it underneath the plate of my Stamparatus to give me a more level surface. Inking up evenly is easier when your plate is more level. So you can throw a stamp case underneath there or an ink pad. Just get it lifted up so it's not tilting down and away from you. Okay, let's close that up. And I'll hold still with one hand and walk with the other, and then switch. Hold still with one hand, walk with the other. You can do some even pressure if you want to, just kind of leaning your weight into. But the real trick is not how much pressure you put on the plate. It's just making sure that everybody gets pressed down a little bit and you leave some time for the ink to transfer. Just take your time. And then take a look, carefully lift so that the paper stays in place just in case you wanna go back to darken anything up. I think it looks great. We're gonna take it out of there. And we can apply it to the front of our box with some liquid glue. I love getting this background on this box. It really just starts to bring it all to life. We're gonna slide the background underneath that little collar. That's why I love the liquid glue for this. Just slide it under and you want an even border bottom, right and left. When you've got that, you can just burnish it down. It's really starting to come together, isn't it? More stamping. I've got some 
basic white cardstock, and Starry Sky, Calypso Coral, Parakeet Party. I'm going to stamp Make a Splash in Starry Sky. Then I've got my little scallop bathing suit. Adorable polka dot bathing suit. And then my little striped bathing suit. And let's cut them out and get my snips. All right, there's our make a splash and our swimsuits. Let's get some dimensionals on the back of those swimsuits. We can slide these bits aside. Let's bring our sample back in here. Got some designer series paper for the background there. I've got they're between three and three quarters and four inches. They were really scraps, but this is an inch and a quarter, one inch and three quarters of an inch. I'm going to put some chicken lips on the bottom of these banners. And I'm using my Taylor Tag Punch. I told you guys fair and square that I would never ever stop using this punch. So I hope you got it before it retired. It's perfect for doing the little dovetails, but you can do that with scissors or use the square punch if you've got one. That works pretty well too, but nothing has been better for chicken lips than the banner or the Taylor Tag banner punch for me or Taylor Tag punch for me. I'm going to go ahead and start with the widest banner and I'm going to put that one on. This one's about three and three quarters of an inch and I'm going to do the entire banner about a uh, half an inch maybe from the edge. Get that on there nice and straight, burnish it down. Then I'll go with the next wider, not putting adhesive all the way to the top edge because this one's going to be just a little bit long on purpose so we can trim off the excess. Love. I'm going to take my treat out of here for a minute because we're going to have to trim. And then my three quarter inch, or inch Calypso Coral piece. That one's going to go over the two. I love all the gorgeous splash of color and pattern that we just added. And really, I was just using scraps. That's why they're all a different length. Trim off the excess. I have a couple of pieces that I die cut before the video. I took a piece of Starry Sky cardstock, just a long skinny piece, and cut the edge of it with the sports events dies this biggest ticket i love this die set check it out if it's still available it's on the last chance list and it's on the last chance list for half off even if you don't like the sports theme or you don't have sports fans in your house the tickets you will use again and again and again then we've got this big what i call a big bottle cap it's kind of a crimp edge circle with an embossed um, detail. We cut that from Crush Curry. And then I also have a stitched rectangle here. This one was done with the rectangle stitch dies and it's what I call G. So somewhere in the middle. It's the one that's about three and an eighth by one and thirteen sixteenths. And got that awesome little stitched detail on there. So let's start with our um, ticket edge here. We're gonna add a little bit of liquid glue and glue it to the back of our stitched rectangle. I love the little pop of color. It pulls that starry sky through to the front of the project from the background. And that is just priceless. Now, my bottle cap is kind of mimicking the sun and I wanna check all of my placement before. It's a little bit. Hi. All right, I got the sun where I want it. So I'm gonna come in with some liquid glue. Glue that guy down there. But because this is a treat box, we're gonna go double and triple dimensionals. I've got dimensionals on my swimsuits already, but which would be enough on a on a card. But since we're doing a treat box, let's go a little crazy. 
put some dimensionals on here. I didn't go all the way to the edge. I'll show you why in just a second. Watch your dimensional placement here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my little rectangle so that I've got some rays showing behind and the tails of my banner showing just fine. Now I'm going to take my linen thread. I'm going to slide the linen thread around and then under my rectangle, around again, and then under the edge of my rectangle. So now it's wrapped two times. I've got enough thread up here. I'm going to make a bow, and I love to do it this way because now when I loop, swoop, tuck, and pull, I've got the box to hold on to. I'm not just trying to wrap a linen thread around a loose cutout shape, a, a rectangle panel, while it flops around in space. It's firmly attached to the box and gives me some resistance for tying. We can hold the center of the knot and pull the tail to adjust the size of the loop and then cut away from the spool. Now we can add our swimsuits. Cute, make a splash is next. And for make a splash, I'm going to cut a long skinny strip from the end of my dimensional and then cut it in half. I'm gonna put half of that long skinny strip right underneath the bathing suit here on the white rectangle. Remove the liner and then take my splash word and place that right on that dimensional. Then I'll take this other half of the strip, I'll cut a little square off the end, put that on A, and remove the liner. Set that there for just a second while we take the rest of the strip, put that on make, and remove the liner. Now we can place make a splash. And we've got some fun dimensional action going on there. All right, let's get our treat back in the box. Isn't that just the perfect? I'm going to send that to school with my son to give to some of his teachers on their last day of school this week. All right, a little bit of what I... I'm calling sun drops. I love these um, glossy dot assortment. These yellow ones look like raindrops and sunshine all mixed together in one with this shiny um, holographic and the warm golden color. We'll add a couple of those. Make a splash. Are you ready for summer? I don't know if I am. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this series featuring the sunny splash and rays of light stamp sets. If you've got any questions about the project, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and to shop 24-7, get your Stampin' Up! supplies, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!